Welcome back. We had a subscriber ask for a question and I'm going to try to deliver the answer as quick as possible. So I'm going to get this video out now. They asked, how can you get PowerShell 7 or anything later than 5.1 to run within VS Code? So that's what we're going to go over right now. The first step that you need to make sure you do is on your system, whether it be Mac OS or Linux or, you know, Windows. Obviously, we're using Windows. So you need to make sure you download the binary. So if you go out to their website, you search, all you have to do is Google or Bing. I usually Google, but this virtual machine has Bing. I haven't set up with Google, but go ahead and search for PowerShell core download. First link, install PowerShell core. You'll get this page up. It explains the different ways you can install PowerShell. It's PowerShell now, it used to be called PowerShell Core. I, I call it PowerShell Core. But you just need to get the dot core framework installed. And so I would typically go the easiest route with the MSI package, but it breaks down the different ways you can install it depending on what your use case is. So we're gonna go ahead and install it through the MSI. So I already went down to the MSI. I went ahead and downloaded this so you didn't have to wait for that download. And then if we jump over to our downloads folder, We'll go ahead and just install it live, not tested. So we'll go ahead and click this, wait for it to run. All right, smart screen can't reach right now. Run anyways. All right, welcome. We'll go to next. See programs file PowerShell. So that's where we're going to install it. Just remember that because you'll need that later. Um, We'll go ahead and uh, just look at these settings. We got uh, PowerShell path environment variable. I would say yes, you want that. You can do enable PowerShell remoting if you're going to do that. Uh, telemetry data, I would probably disable telemetry data. Uh, and then add open here, context menu. So this is where you can right click, the right click context menu if you're going to do right click integrations, like right click some a script and say run with PowerShell core. Um, add a run with PowerShell 7 context menu. That's also the same thing. So you could check those if you want. Um, really doesn't matter uh, based on your use case technically. I'm using a VM. I'm just going to revert the snapshot after this, so not a big deal. Go ahead and uh, enable updating PowerShell through Microsoft WSUS service. I always call WSUS, obviously, in my earlier videos. Uh, that's recommended. Go ahead and keep that for now. And then Use Microsoft Update when I check for updates recommended. We'll go ahead and keep that. Click install. Boom. We'll install it. If this takes a minute, I'll fast forward the video, but we'll see how fast this is. And then once this is done, we will go ahead and set up VS Code to use it. Uh, one thing to note with PowerShell Core or PowerShell, Windows PowerShell 7, you actually use a different uh, executable to run it. Typically it's PWSH in the shell. So we'll go ahead and show that as well. And basically what you need to do is update VS Code to know about PowerShell core. And then when you go into your settings, you can make it your default shell if you really want. So still installing. I'll probably go ahead and fast forward this and I'll see you once it's completed. All right, we're going ahead and done. Go ahead, finish. Now, if we go ahead and search for PWSH, there's our PowerShell 7. You can go to open file location. So that'll pop up. So now we know what directory it's in. So we're good there. So next, we'll go to VS Code. And then right here, you hit this little plus sign. And you'll see your options for command prompt, PowerShell, and stuff. It doesn't know yet about VS Code, or sorry, PowerShell 7. So I'm going to go ahead and close this real fast just to make sure, just to be safe. I'm going to go ahead and relaunch Visual Studio Code. And we'll go ahead and click this drop down and see if anything pops up yet. And go ahead and close these notices. Don't really care about those. And look, there it is right there, PWSH. So it, it did recognize it as a terminal. And if we come in here, you can go to set default profile. 
obviously we, we do have a PAWSH. So if I, in this shell, if I do dollar PS version table, there's different ways to do this too, obviously, but this is the one I usually use. We can see, oh, we're actually on PowerShell version 7.5 already. So this one is a PowerShell, uh, new version of PowerShell. Let's go ahead and yeah, it's launching the PWSH now. You can go in here. We're gonna set default profile. And then up here, you can see the different versions. Here's regular PowerShell. Here's the PowerShell 7. We'll go ahead and select that. And now our default profile for PowerShell is PowerShell 7. So if I close these out, close these errors, close that out. Go ahead and new terminal. All right, there we go. And then let's go ahead and switch back to test all this out in case you wanted to go back to a different default. We'll use regular PowerShell. Close that out. Try that again and see if that works. And there we go. It should be regular PowerShell. Yep. So if I do PS version table and there's regular PowerShell. So I know it was a quick video. Minor edits, just wanted to get this out there quick. So hopefully video audio is good and I'll see you on the shell next time.